All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn a rotor using this brake lathe. And so the first thing we gotta do is we gotta put our cutting bits on, and it looks like this. This is gonna mount onto this stud that pokes out. And then we'll use this spacer, a washer, and a nut, and we'll get that tightened down. Now to give myself room for being able to make my adjustments, I usually keep the, the back side of this flush with the front of this head assembly so that I can drive it in far enough to make my cuts. And then on here, as far as adjustment goes this way, I keep it right in the middle. I can always change it later, but that's where I begin. Okay, we'll get that snug down. And now we're going to come over right here and we're going to just back this out manually to give ourselves room to mount that rotor. Okay. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of these adapters. They look like this. All right, and it's gonna go on with the more hollow side facing the rotor. And the rotor we're cutting today looks like this. You have to make sure that that adapter fits inside of this section of the rotor. Next, we're gonna take the spring. We're gonna stick that in there. And then we're gonna find a cone that fits in to this diameter. So we'll try this one. That looks like it fits really good. So we'll put that on here next. Then the rotor. And then we need one more adapter. Another one of these. And again, the hollow side faces the rotor. And then we'll put a couple of spacers. A washer or two and finally the nut and this is reverse thread so you're twisting it backwards from what you're used to and then when you're ready to tighten it up it helps to kind of wiggle the rotor slash twist it around a few times just to make sure that you're centered and then go ahead and tighten that up all right, once you've done that, you gotta come back to these manual adjusters and keep making your large adjustments in order to get your cutting bits over to the rotor. Okay, okay, now I got us a better view so we can see how to set this part up. All of our major uh, setup is done. We just gotta set our bits and set how much we're gonna cut off and then let the machine do its job. Before we get going too far, we need to put on something to absorb vibrations on the rotor. So we're gonna use this. like that. Now we're going to turn the machine on and on the side it says drum and it says rotor so make sure you turn it on to the rotor. Okay and while it's spinning make sure the mounting looks good make sure that rotor is not wobbling all over the place. If it is you want to readjust all your adapters and make sure that the rotor is centered. Everything looks good here though so what we're going to do is we're going to manually drive in the whole cutting assembly. And we'll take it to the middle of the rotor. Once you get to the middle of the rotor, you're gonna un unlock each of these pieces so that then we can adjust the cutting bit into the rotor. So we'll just twist this slowly 
As soon as we hear it contact that rotor, we'll stop. Okay, so we'll lock it back down. Let's do the same thing on this side. What we're doing right now is we're zeroing our bits. Okay. Lock them both down. Now we're gonna manually drive it in, making sure that we don't run our cutting bit over here into the rotor hat. Okay, right there. Now we're gonna set up how much we're gonna remove. So we'll unlock one at a time. And for a minimum cut, you're usually doing about two thousandths of an inch on each side, which is a total of four thousandths removed. So we're gonna turn our dial up right here. There's increments. And we're gonna turn it up two thousandths of an inch. And lock it back down. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Lock it down. And then you're gonna go down here and flip this switch, which is going to let the machine take over. And it's just gonna slowly back it out, removing that four thousandths of an inch that we just set it up for. And once you get it going, you want to listen to make sure that there's a consistent contact on that rotor. If you hear it kind of jumping with the sound, that means either it's not mounted correctly or there's run out on the rotor, which is one of the reasons you might be machining this. But if you're trying to go for a consistent cut, you might have to take it back in, adjust it in a couple thousands more maybe, and then start over. Now you could just finish this whole pass, go back in and remove another two thousandths, but we're all, you gotta be thinking about time here. Um, never remove more than 10 thousandths of an inch in one pass. So that's five thousandths on both sides. Never do more than that, that's too much. And then obviously you gotta base how much you're removing on how much you can remove. There's a minimum thickness for this rotor. You gotta look up that specification. And if you're already close to that minimum thickness, you're just gonna have to buy new rotors. If the reason you're doing a brake turning is, is because of a runout issue, you also have to think, if it's heated up that much that it's warped, there is potentially so much damage to the metal itself Right, metal properties change with heat. You might consider getting a new rotor anyways. But if it's only a couple thousandths run out, we could easily take that out on, on the brake blade. Okay, so we're just gonna let it do its job, and then I'll show you how to finish it once it's, once it's done. Okay, so once it finishes its pass, and you feel like you've removed what you needed to remove, the last thing you need to do before you take this rotor off is you need to give it a cross hatch finish. So right now, since those blades were cutting in a perfect circle, there are lines that are just going this direction on the rotor, which isn't gonna give us the best braking. It's going to reduce our friction that we could have. So we're gonna take a piece of emery cloth like this, and we're just gonna go up and down on the rotor while it's spinning and create some 45 degree angles of cut on there so that we have good braking performance on this rotor. Call it cross hatching. Other people call it a non-directional finish. Same thing. So you gotta apply some moderate pressure while you do this or else it's not gonna actually do anything. Make sure you do both sides. 
And once you're finished, you'll know it looks good once you turn off the machine if you can see those 45 degree cuts. So let's shut it off and see what this side looks like. It's kind of hard to see on the camera. Okay, but right there, you can see how there's cuts going this way. All right, that's what we want. We don't want cuts going in perfect circles around the rotor. So once you finish that on both sides, go ahead and take it off and then take it to the sink and wash it off with Dawn dish soap and water. Use some uh, towels to dry it off quickly. It's gonna rust immediately, so you wanna put some brake cleaner or something on there to prevent the rust. And then you're ready to put this back on the vehicle.